So next we will have uh, Melani Periwa. Uh, she is the support manager of resources, mobilization and communication for this uh, Sri Lankan non-governmental organization. Um, Ms. Periwa process, process over 10 years of experience in working for non-profits and has a master in regional development and other academic qualifications in social science, uh, in social science and international development. Uh, let me pass the stage to uh, Melanie. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Misha. Uh, I was sincerely hoping that I won't be following Pranati because her presentation was so good. And I have a top to act to follow, especially since I'm sure I forgot half of my presentation because I was so wrapped up with that, uh, with what Parinama is doing in India. So I'm going to try my best. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, let me start with uh, my presentation. We are Leeds. Leeds is a very small NGO, a non-governmental organization working in a very small country, uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, the pearl of the Indian Ocean. Uh, so we want, we are excited actually to present today to you our role in social solidarity economy and uh, as an NGO leads us so much. Uh, so I just want, to, I would be only focusing on one of our social enterprises this morning because I, I think it's nice to focus and uh, let's all follow this one story. Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here, and I hope this will be an interesting presentation to you. Uh, oops, I, yeah. So we are from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka uh, is called the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. Right now, it's looking more like a teardrop uh, because of uh, social issues that we're faced with. Uh, I'm sure as uh, South Asian countries, there's so much we have in common. You will understand our social context, but as a small brief, uh, let me tell you that uh, as the World Bank records, Sri Lanka is a lower middle income country with a GDP per capita of 3,852 US dollars and a gross national income growth of 1.5%. These are statistics recorded as of 2019. Now, thanks to our systems in place of universal free education and free healthcare, as well as several other uh, social welfare schemes, Sri Lanka ranks quite high on the Human Development Index. But just like it's a land of promise, we have so many natural resources at our disposal, but we are also sadly a country of missed opportunities uh, because there are uh, so many socio-economic political issues that prevent the benefits of our economic development reaching out uh, or rather uh, trickling down to uh, several social groups across Sri Lanka, uh, especially those living in rural areas and among communities that are most affected by uh, the poverty and other social injustices are uh, the state workers, uh, a community that brings in so much of uh, income to our country, uh, as well as post-conflict community. As you all know, Sri Lanka was a community, uh, was a country that lived through 30 years of ethnic conflict. And this has so much repercussions that uh, though we have, uh, we I mean, we saw an end to it in 2009, we see, we'll still see so many sociopolitical repercussions that we are still living with, that communities are still grappling with as well as uh, certain agriculture groups across Sri Lanka. Uh, you know, they're facing so much poverty. Uh, micro loans have, uh, you know, engulfed their lives and, you know, they're trying, they're struggling to make a uh, uh, day's living, as well as several fishing communities. Right now, we are living through uh, a situation of uh, contamination of our waters due to the Express Pearl a disaster. You would have heard, you know, uh, cargo ship caught fire, uh, uh, there's oil leaks, uh, marine animals, uh, you know, washing shore dead. Uh, this has uh, really, uh, really uh, have, have had a really bad uh, uh, impact on the lives of, and livelihoods of fishermen, fishing communities across the coastlines of Sri Lanka. So it is in this context that leads uh, a non-governmental organization 
uh, we are dedicated actually to creating safer spaces and brighter futures for the children of Sri Lanka, because we believe in brighter futures for them. So everything that we do is centered around creating a safer space for them, a brighter future for them. Uh, so our work is essentially in the areas of safeguarding children, empowering communities, responding to crisis uh, situation, emergency situations like the current COVID-19 pandemic. And then we have our special initiatives. Uh, our special initiatives include our new venture into social enterprises, which of which you know I'll be sharing one of such social enterprises. And uh, yes, this is it, our new social enterprise. Uh, but before that, let me uh, let's talk about a bit about sustainability. Uh, so sustainability is a term that is very close to my heart. I remember when I was reading for my master's a few years ago, how I sat at a class, a lecture in economic, uh, sorry, environmental conservation. And uh, there was this one lecture that completely changed my world outlook. Uh, my professor was talking about the introducing to us this worldview called Spaceship Earth. And he was telling us how uh, he was comparing Earth uh, to a spacecraft out there in space with a finite number of resources on board. Uh, so this uh, term was first coined by Henry George in 1879, and it has much developed with additions from several other uh, experts. Uh, but basically it's about you know this spacecraft like i said earlier out there in space with a finite number of resources and that meant that the crew and everyone on board had to cooperate live harmoniously and ensure that uh, you know it, it they were uh, have they would uh, utilize these resources for not just their good but for the good of the future uh, until you know they landed on a, a better planet maybe or you know, they came across more resources, but that is a big if. Uh, so you know, we had to uh, we have to manage our resources. I thought that was a fantastic way of explaining uh, how we are stewards of the resources that are uh, given to us, both planetary profit and people. Uh, now, in venturing into social enterprises, this is what Leeds wanted. We wanted to ensure that we take into account our role as stewards of a very fragile planet with finite resources. Now, one of the first lessons in economics is uh, this lesson that teaches us that resources are finite. So the whole production process of a country would be answering three major questions. Now, I'm sure all of us, we know these uh, main questions. So this is how I'm going to explain our social enterprise using these three questions of what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. So I will now introduce you to our CSAB block. We call it the brick of the future. We're very proud of it. Uh, so this is what we produce. Uh, the compressed stabilized engineered block, uh, in common parlance, we'll know it as the earth block, uh, is an alternative building material that is environmentally friendly in its production. And it has, it lends to several other uh, environment friendly practices as well as energy saving. Uh, so we'll get to that later. This uh, is what we produce. This leads me to the next question, how to produce. So the bricks, as you see, are produced using only five to 7% cement. The others uh, are earth that is sustainably sourced. These bricks are not burnt in kilns, which is how the traditional bricks here in Sri Lanka are pre prepared. We burn it in tall kilns, like little ovens of some sort. If, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the term kilns, it's, it's like a high tower of bricks that are burnt using uh, firewood and other uh, poor resources. So these bricks are not uh, burnt in kilns. We sun dry it, which means that we are preventing deforestation as well as air pollution. Uh, the preparation of this brick, the production of this brick saves multiple other resources. And uh, in uh, using this brick in constructing homes, uh, we also save other resources, many other resources, because if it's unique design, it lends to pipe laying, 
and it is ideal for uh, construction as it uh, it uh, saves a lot of time on the uh, part of the constructor as well as the cost of construction. Then again, uh, we have ensured that this brick has uh, thermal insulation properties because of uh, the soil it is produced with. Uh, so this, th the thermal insulation properties of the brick ensure cooler room, room temperatures, which will post construction uh, when you move into a house or an office constructed with this brick, uh, you will be saving your energy because you will need uh, lesser cooling uh, room, room temperature control mechanisms like fans or ACs because the room will be cooler. And this is very important for us because Sri Lanka is a tropical country. It's very hot over here, especially these days. Yes, so this is uh, how we, what we produce and how we produce. Moving on to our next uh, question, for whom do we produce? As a social enterprise, uh, we ensure that we produce these bricks for the environment. We ensure that, you know, this brick, introducing this brick as an alternative building material will be, uh, will be saving our environment in the future. And we are very proud of uh, how eco-friendly it is. As well as we save this, uh, sorry, we produce this brick for the people of uh, post-conflict areas and other rural areas who have no homes because it's lower uh, construction cost ensures that more people now can afford housing and also the housing will have a lower cost living uh, maintenance fee rather. Then we also produce this for a post-conflict community. Now our CSEV yard is centered in Balipunam, Muletev, which is Northern Sri Lanka, the heart where our 30 uh, year conflict took place. And the communities living in this area have, uh, like I said earlier, have lived through a lot of social economic difficulties and issues. And uh, this community by constructing it for them, we ensure that we are employing, uh, employing people from the community. We're generating employment for this community. And you will understand when I go into sharing a so story, how it helps this community. And on the long run, like I said earlier, we are a, a child focused non-governmental organization in Sri Lanka. So on the long run, we are going to um, ensure the sustainability of our organization. So thereby we also produce this brick for restorative care for survivors of child abuse, which is an underfunded area in Sri Lanka. So on the long run, our manufacture of CSEB bricks will uh, sustain our work with survivors of child abuse. Like I said earlier, this is our little success story that I'm, I'm very uh, proud to share with you. In this picture, you see this man who is a father of four young children. His name is Selam Sivanathan. So Selam Sivanathan lives in the heart of uh, Muletevu. Uh, Selam was among thousands of families affected directly by the post, uh, the armed conflict, the ethnic war that took place in Sri Lanka that uh, went on for a period of 30 years. So living in the heart of where a conflict took place meant that he lost out on years of his childhood, lost out on his adolescence, lost out on his youth years. So that meant that Selam did not have a formal education, did not have time to develop any skills uh, of any sort because he's, he was full on survival mode. He faced years of displacement, uh, moving from one displacement camp to another. And when he came back home in 2009, at the end of the war, he basically had to build his life from scratch. Now this is a very difficult task, especially for a young father of four children. Uh, he worked for years as a manual laborer, which meant work was not uh, was very hard to come by. It was very temperamental. It was not permanent, and there would be days when I mean, food would have been hard to be hard, uh, it would have been hard to put food on the table. Uh, so, uh, and education for his young children, there were the story of what they went through, we can only imagine. Uh, so Selam was among 19 uh, workers of 
our CSCB yard in Mullithir. And when the CSCB yard opened in Balipunam, Salam uh, found employment. Uh, he had now a permanent source of employment, permanent source of income coming into his family, which meant again, food on the table, education for his children, savings uh, and improved living standards. So this is the type of impact that we are hoping to make. It's, it's a very small scale because our uh, social enterprise is quite new, uh, but uh, we are very excited because we are reaching out in multiple areas of impacting lives. And this is why I believe that this is a social solidarity economy. It's a sustainable venture because we are ensuring that not just people like Selim are profiting, but also our organization will profit on the long run, as well as the environment will profit on the long run too. Uh, so this, like I said, uh, is why we believe that uh, though it takes time and energy to build up a social enterprise of this uh, sort, of this nature, uh, we believe that it is a social investment because we are not just investing in our, ourselves, but we are investing in communities that are in need of assistance. We count uh, this a massive success. Uh, this model it works well on paper, but you know, uh, a pandemic like COVID comes across and we are just crippled. Uh, so this is our greatest challenge right now because at the onset of the pandemic is where, you know, we had uh, just, we were coming to close with an agreement with Habitat for Humanity that was constructing hundreds of homes for people in the North. And we were looking out to uh, further develop and uh, develop production for outsiders. We had an aggressive marketing plan and we were approaching uh, construction workers, engineers, with our bricks, but so much of our attempts have been crippled badly because of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially as Sri Lanka is currently experiencing our third wave. Uh, we have restricted uh, movement. And yes, this is our greatest challenge, if I may say so. I will go into our sustainable development goals. We have achieved so much in a very short time. Uh, this is, this is, I mean, I'm looking at this screen and I'm so happy because we are working towards us, uh, achieving these goals because we are not just ensuring, you know, there is food security for communities. We are improving living standards, contributing towards their well-being. We're ensuring that communities have decent work and there's grassroots level economic growth happening in households that are not reached by the economic growth that, are, that is happening in, a con in our uh, country. Uh, we're reducing economic uh, inequalities and we're ensuring that there are sustainable cities and communities. We are looking at a future where uh, consumers will be purchasing our brick and building uh, their homes, their offices with a brick that is eco-friendly. And obviously we are uh, ensuring responsible consumption of resources and climate action. As a very new social enterprise, it takes time, financial investment to build on it and sustainable income generating source is a journey that we need to work towards. And towards this, we have received the generous support of organizations like the Rhythm Foundation and advice from experts such as uh, Datuk uh, Denison Jayasuri. And we're very grateful for uh, your support and walking with us along this journey. And our goal, like I said earlier, is not just to ensure the profitability of this venture, uh, but also uh, its reach towards people and the planet. Now we've come a long way and the journey ahead is longer. And I, I should say that, you know, this uh, venture has helped us, encourage us so much that we're looking into new social enterprise ventures too, uh, because we are so excited that, you know, the impact that it's having on the lives of people, not just the organization. And it's very challenging, especially, like I said, the COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm sure is something that is common to us all. 
so I welcome all of you to connect with us. The, this whole story is a very long story that I have to summarize so shortly and briefly. So I encourage all of you to join with us, to write to us at info at leads.lk, look, look us up online. Uh, we are Leeds Sri Lanka and do follow us as uh, we document this uh, journey of growth. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I look forward to uh, connecting with all of you joining at this forum. Thank you very much, Manani, for your wonderful sharing because your project is actually about um, the triple bottom line. We also touch about the, the uh, part about environmental uh, protection, uh, which is very uh, important aspect. Um, uh, actually, from your presentation and also from uh, Pratani's sharing, I can see the um, characteristics, the access of individuals, uh, countries. That's very good. Um, I think that uh, we will have a very fruitful um, discussion after all the presentations. Thank you very much. Um, let's um, go to the next presentation.